Um, well, hello. Um, you must admit I'm scared stiff. So you, you've been listening to Alex and explanations about what concept is and how you use them for many weeks. And, well, I haven't, which means that there's, you, you know a lot that I don't. Um, so I am trying to, to stick to telling you how to support uh, concepts in, in the context of C++. And so this is, this is about how to express the concepts as opposed to, to, to uh, anything else. So uh, basically, when you go back and look at templates, there was some aims for templates. And uh, we wanted to support efficient generic programming. Uh, basically, um, I, I wanted a user-defined uh, vector that could compete with arrays and operations on vectors so that you could write code uh, and get rid of my least favorite data type, which is the array, which is a data type so stupid it doesn't even know how many elements it's got. Uh, it also has very nasty uh, conversion properties. So um, when I try to design something, I, I, I quite often settle on a couple of problems that seems key and convince myself that if I solve these problems, lots of other problems will be solved. And so the, the vector and operations on vectors were, were, were some of them, uh, sort being the obvious example. And I'm still sort of focused on that. If I can do that, there's many other things I can do. Um, I really didn't want to build something that could only do what I could imagine. Uh, my imagination, like most people's, are somewhat limited, uh, biased by their experience and such. And if I only do what, what I understand and what I've seen, uh, there's, a, there's a failure lurking somewhere. So we want something very general, we want very um, good performance, and we would like to have nice interfaces so that we can think about the code, we can check the uh, calls being correct, uh, basically have a proper specification of how you can call it. And I guess the only thing I can say is two out of three ain't bad. Uh, th this we got nowhere near and it got sort of lost in the noise for, 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 for several years. And we had all kinds of work around and uh, all kinds of of ways of surviving didn't work too well. I had years where I thought um, constraints checking classes would do the job or that the compiler writers would sooner or later catch up so we would get a, a decent uh, error messages out of something that was ill specified. Um, Alex uh, spent uh, quite a few years pointing out to me that this was obviously wrong. But I didn't want to believe it because there was so much else going on, and this was this was difficult. But anyway, so this, <sighs> yeah, right. But I mean, nobody else knew how to do it at the time. That that's my excuse. And um, then somebody thought they could do it, and we'll get to that. And it bothers me for about twenty years. Um, yeah, it did. Basically, templates provides compile time doc typing. Uh, you pass something to a template. And it uses what it expects to use. And if the argument type has what you expect, things happen as you expect them to, provided, of course, the semantics is right. But that's a different issue. And um, so that's dog typing. If, if an argument walks like a dog and quacks like a dog, it's a dog. And if you're writing Python, you get runtime errors. If you're writing C++, you get compile time errors. It, Roughly the same. Um, you, you, you pick your poison. But, but it is poison. Let's uh, look at more. It, it's just not good enough. There simply are no proper interfaces. We're back like in the days with C, where when I came to C, uh, a function declaration told you the return type, the name, and that it was a function. Uh, this, this, this radical idea of actually checking that square root of double took a double um, what was not accepted at the time. As a matter of fact, it's one of my contributions to see. Um, 
And they, they were very, I mean, if you gave a, 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 a 2 to square root of 2, it, of course, either crashed, which you hope, or it gave a really bad result. Uh, so you needed to be able to specify what the interface to the, uh, to, to, to the call was. And as a matter of fact, in C, I think even today, you're not obliged to use a function declaration. You can just go, without doing anything else in the language, you do square root of 2 and crash, just like in the good old days. This is the runtime version of what C++ does with templates. You write the template, and you can't say what it expects in the interface. This, this is bad. Uh, we can live with it. I mean, generic programming in C++ has been one of the really runaway successes in the last 15 years. Uh, the language is creaking under the burden of all the weird and wonderful things people do. Some of them are just weird. Some of them are wonderful. <laughs> I mean, some of them are weird and wonderful. We, we need to rein this stuff in. Not, not because it's, it was a failure and it didn't work. No, we need to rein it in because it was a success. It's the single biggest success in C++ 98. It's the STL and the techniques that came out of, of, of that. OK, error detection is far too late. You can do some compile time checking and a lot of link time checking. And this has to do with the fact that templates, uh, one way of looking at templates is that they they sort of gather all the information they can find from wherever they can find it, usually under very strange rules for how you find things. But basically, they are ma machines for gathering stuff from, from different contexts, munch them together, and produce unsurpassed uh, performance code, if you know what you're doing. You can also provide unsurpassed messes. But look, th th this is a sharp sword. And uh, but the error messages come far too late, and they are absurdly long. Now, people always, I mean, I thought you could get better error messages. And I gave up a few years ago. And people still believe it. And so there's a clang effort uh, over at Google that makes much better error messages for some things. But I, um, I was trying to run a little test uh, about a month ago. I was uh, just passing a function to a package task to test the, um, the, some of the, the, the concurrent uh, facilities, the, the, the threads and such. And uh, so I have this little three-line program. And I got not just a lot of error messages. I got so many error messages that my Linux window ran out of space. So I couldn't see the first couple of thousand lines. And that sort of makes it hard to, to, to find the error. It had something to do with tuples, but you know, I wasn't using any tuples. There's no tuples in my source code. Oh, well, it's GCC. We know that's old stuff. We should use uh, the new snazzy stuff with the better error messages. So I, um, I use the latest uh, Clang instead. And the same thing happens. I can't see the first few thousand uh, error messages, and I look at the rest. And apparently here, I have not had trouble with tuples. I just have screwed up my rational arithmetic. What rational arithmetic? Mm -hmm. It's a three-line code that launches a task. Oh, you know, the task has something to do with time. Time has something to do with arithmetic. Similarly, when you bundle stuff of it as something to tuple. So uh, if you spent a couple of years with this, you can see there's some logic to it. Yeah, I mean, it probably has something to do with my code, but I can't figure out what. I had copied something that only had a move constructor. But OK, we have to do better than that. And we can. We've done it. So we'll get to that. But, but basically, this is a big problem. Uh, what do we got? When you observe what people do with templates, they lose everything they have learned about interfaces and specifying, separating the use from the, um, fr fr from the implementation. And instead, they, they think in terms of the implementation. 
and the implementation is the interface. I mean, why did you pass this argument? You know it should only be, you, you know it, it should be only be moved. Or why did you pass this uh, argument over when it doesn't support plus, uh, pl the plus operation? It's your fault. And they, they, they think in terms of the implementation and listen to people talk. They, 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 they talk a lot about their implementations. That, that's wrong. And it entangles the users. The users has to know about the implementation. If I change the implementation one little bit of my template and you are my user, you, your interface just changed. So you better know a little bit about what I'm doing. And you don't want to know about the details of my template code, right? Uh, if you've seen template code, you know that's true. Uh, uh, leads to all general interfaces and data structures. People tend to, I, 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 I couldn't quite understand why people used all of these pairs and tuples and uh, variadic templates. And, and, and basically, they, 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 they don't want to fix the interface. They want the most general implementation that can do everything with everything. Uh, because they don't want to constrain their users. And so you get into uh, implementations that, that are not just generic, but, but dramatically weird in taking everything and trying to make sense of it. Uh, some of the making sense should be error handling, but usually people try to get it to work. And so, um, well, basically, um, it, it, it's, it's tricky. And also, it doesn't integrate well. People think in different ways when they, when they do uh, templates. And that means that the code that's templatized doesn't actually sort of work in the same way as codes that's not templatized. So my favorite way of writing uh, a, a, a template is to write a concrete version from my favorite data type. Uh, I mean, if it works for an integer, it'll work for all things that behave like integers. And if, if it works for a vector, it'll work for most things that looks like a container. Um, and then you can take that and you can concrete thing and turn it into a generalization and you think through it, etc. That doesn't work for a lot of the, the template thinking because they, they, they think different. So I, I really think that we should think about generic code in ways that are far more similar to uh, ordinary code than, than, than we've been used to. And in particular, we should think in terms of specify the interface, leave uh, the implementer some room for, opti for, for optimization, for improved algorithms and things like that. Little things like, can you insert a debug statement in your code without changing the interface? With templates, well, if there's a C out in there or a printf, uh, it assumes that thing is in the uh, environment and maybe it wasn't. If it wasn't used before, I have introduced the new, to, anyway. So uh, it's, we, we have to think about this, but we need flexibility. Okay, so um, my, my, my current hobby horse is that generic programming is just programming. It's, it's probably the next level of programming, slightly higher level of programming, programming in plus one, uh, but Fundamentally, we can think about it in the same way. So here we have our square root of double. Uh, it's been good since about 84, um, in C since about 89. Uh, and we take a double, and we can call it square root of double, right? That's what we said. And we can take a square root of non-double, and we're told you can't do that. That's not what you're supposed to do. K and R, C, this is not true. You just have to get it right. OK, so what I want to do is I want to sort a container. And here is a container. And so I sort it. That's fine. I gave it a container. Here I give it a non-container. Happens to be a pointer to a container. but It's wrong, so I am told this is an error. You shouldn't do that. And so this is not true for KNRC. This is not true for current C++. Because, well, you get the error, but boy, it's late. Furthermore, there's no way you can say what a container is in current C++. I mean, I, I, I know that 7 is a double, can be converted to a double. There is nothing in C++ uh, 
11 that says that the vector of strings really is a container because we don't know what a container is, even though there's lots of talks about containers and we know intuitively what it is, but we have, can't specify it. So let's see. Uh, some of you will remember C++ OX concept. And so I'll, I'll just go uh, slowly from a language point of view and try and go back and look to see why that was a debacle. Uh, we didn't know it at the time. Some of us were getting more and more nervous, but you know, it was good. So basically, we had we could express the requirements of all the standard library algorithms and more. Uh, we could check the calls and got reasonably good error messages. Not as good as I'd expected, but good error messages. We could check the definitions. If you used a plus one in find instead of plus plus, you would get caught. You could map names and calls so that if I had a data type where things were, were, were called uh, name and value, and you have an implementation that assumes first and second, uh, I can map this. Great stuff. You can write many papers about it, and people did. It was fundamentally object-oriented in nature. The, 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 the general notion was that the concept was was some kind of entity with a lot of functions and names and had to do with scopes and you could inherit them. And uh, basically, they were fairly object-oriented in nature. And they were somewhat similar to the Haskell type classes, which means that all the theoreticians, all the functional guys, yeah, it's right, it's right. You just make it more like Haskell type classes. This has made it quite hard to argue that this was unsound uh, because Haskell is the academic definition of sound. Um, okay. Uh, my, my attitude for a long time was, well, if you want a jump table, we've got them. They're called abstract classes. And why do you want another one? And, and Haskell has some problems. Um, some people might like that. I think Alex likes that they don't overload and uh, there's no conversions. But this stuff here could handle the overloads and the conversions. Because they were there in the language and the code people write and such. So it sort of worked. And we could slip it in under existing code using, uh, using templates in the proper way. And, and so you could actually take hundreds of thousands of lines of code and slip a checked library in under where an unchecked one has been. I mean, I was told many times this is impossible. I said, no, 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 that's not the problem. This we have done. The problem is something else. You should have seen uh, working group IFIT 2.8. That's the functional guys when I did that trick on them. Just explained, explained the criteria until people screamed, you can't do it. I said, no, that's not the problem. This was what we did. Now we answer this stuff. Mm -hmm. It was quite fun, but it's dead. And there's really uh, very good reasons why it was dead. Uh, in retrospect, the, the, the real um, indication that something is seriously wrong is those 120 concepts in the standard library. I mean, for any meaningful definition of concept, this is absurd. Um, how many concepts are there in basic algebra? Dozen? Dozen and a half? That order. And, and I remember one day getting very loud and somewhat yelly with Andrew Sutton in my office. He was a postdoc and we were going to start a project. And I was ranting and raving about this. This, this just can't be right. And I said, basically told him to go away and fi find a dozen concepts that described the uh, standard library. Because if, the, if, if, if algebra had, uh, ha had a, a dozen and a half concepts in it, then the STL couldn't have more. And there's a paper, which you'll see the reference on at the, the end of these slides, where we actually got down to about 16. And our current count from the last two years ago meeting is in the same order of magnitude again, uh, plus a couple of syntactic sugar things that are, that are really convenient, but, but not fundamental. So yeah, we, we, can, we can cut this one uh, by almost an order of magnitude. And I think we have to. Whatever concepts are, there is not 
120 fundamental concepts in the STL. Uh, the specification, this, this, this was at the time driving me nuts. Why do you need to have 73 pages of specification to how to specify this kind of stuff? When I shipped the first C++, the specification was less than 73 pages. Um, this is not just the verbosity of modern ways of writing. It, there was some real complexity here. This is not right. And, and I think it, at some level, it is simple. And compilation required heroic efforts to regain the uh, runtime performance. That, that was done, the code was good, but I'm not sure it was scaled. What was being done inside the compiler is that a, co that a concept really is a, is, a, is a jump table of functions. So when you call this, or use this operation, go through this function and comes over there. And now you just have to optimize that indirect function call away. It's not too hard if you only have one level. If you've got two levels, it gets harder, and then you get into deep complexity problems and such. I had a long chat with, with the, the implementer of the Haskell, uh, the Glasgow Haskell compiler, and he said that uh, Haskell does a really good job till somewhere between four and six. So that means small Haskell programs will run nice and fast, but, but don't actually go through um, uh, type classes more than about six times because then you get the indirect function calls. So you can run fast provided you don't do much. But if you have a large program, you run slow. This is not a property I want of my programs. That's not scaling. So this was done at least for the cases we saw. It actually generated roughly the same code as was uh, being generated without it. That is good. We had to regain the computation speed. This compiler tended to clock in at about 20 times as slow as a compiler that didn't have concepts. Now, of course, C++ compilers are blindingly fast already, so we don't have uh, problems with uh, build times, right? Uh, how would you like 20 times fa uh, slower? Um, I had some of the, the big guys in the, in come up and say to me, you know, if you're going to have concepts, you know, you aren't actually going to get it unless you can get at max 20% overhead for, for having them. We, we, we can probably argue our management into 20% is good for you because you can afford it and you get some benefits from it. But anything north of that, um, no. So independently of the language design thing, how pretty the code is and such, we don't want to be there. We, we, we want to do it so. Part of my rant about concepts was also, whatever concepts are, we have to be able to take the, the simple ones, the frequently used ones. I mean, I really want checking of regular forward iterator, random access iterator, and a few more. I want them built into the compiler. It should, whatever they are, they should be something that you can make into a, a, an intrinsic. We haven't done that yet. And the reason we haven't done that yet for the new stuff is we already run faster than uh, the workarounds. So anyway, but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. We, this is important. And uh, you don't find that in the public papers. Um, and it was not as general, as flexible as I would like. Um, I, there, there was just some things getting in the way. You couldn't optimize away conversions. They tended to to be there still, and it was, anyway, fi finally there was just parts of it I, I, I really couldn't understand. It was, it was encrypted in this ISO ease that um, you, you, you need to be a member of the high priesthood to understand. And uh, believe it or not, I'm not a member of that high priesthood. Um, okay, so back to square one. Um, I wrote a, uh, so I thought, very polite explanation of why we should back out of this, not as, as a verbal, uh, as, as clear as I hope I was here, because I was closer to the thing. But anyway, I, I, I said it had to be improved in a number of ways. It couldn't, and the, the committee rejected it. They actually took something that's been voted into the standard and took it out again out of fear of what would happen, and I'm sure it's thing now. So back to it. So we have to figure out what's a concept, 
what concepts are there? I don't think we can answer the one without the other. And how do we use concepts? I mean, let, let's go away from this uh, language design stuff and first see what it is we want. And then secondarily look how we can um, express it. And I'll just say where we are now. Uh, well, okay, f and, and after doing this, we have to ask what's the language support for that? What can be afford in terms of runtime and uh, compile time overhead? And basically, um, there is no overhead of what the current design, and uh, we, we do actually do better, better than workarounds and compile time. So th that's an indication you got something right. Um, okay, let's see what comes next. Um, here, a, a very critical part of that was a meeting which I think was initiated by uh, the people from Indiana, and they asked Alice, Alex to host a meeting here, uh, just, just around the corner, I believe, where we uh, spent a week, at least somebody spent a week, I had to disappear after three days, um, outlining how we wanted all of the algorithms in the standard library to look. I mean, if we could have our druthers from a, a purely user abstract perspective, how should the specifications look? We write them down, specify in the right way, and then later we can go and see if we can get it. How can you make a language design? What is the right syntax? What is the detailed semantics? How can you implement this stuff? But we got a hundred page, hundred and some page document that specified everything and discussed some of the problems. And that sort of became the, the key thing uh, to drive the, the language design of concepts. And there's a reference, if you haven't seen it, it's, um, it's uh, co-authors co as editors by, by me and Andrew Sutton. And uh, what he was done here. And then some emails going around uh, the country uh, based on it. Some, uh, some of you have contributed. Uh, anyway, so what is it we really need? And then what are the constraints on the problem? And now we can start the language uh, design. And, and I'm going to talk about uh, the language design here. Uh, we were talking about um, constraints. Uh, basically, we want to state the intent uh, of the, the, what is it we require, what is the intent uh, that we... we uh, it, it's, it's, all right. We want to precisely state what a user, a provider of a template argument has to provide and what a uh, user, what an implementer of the template is supposed to, to rely on. That, so state extent on what uh, we have for argument types. Uh, we want to provide point of use checking. That's the most important thing. We don't want the, these multi-thousand lined error messages. And the thing we were working on is it becomes a bunch of constant expressions. It becomes a bunch of Boolean expressions. Does this type have this property? Does the argument type have this property? Has the combination of types we get as arguments got this property? It's all predicates. It's all Boolean algebra. Um, there's nothing about scopes, nothing about objects, nothing about uh, indirect jump tables. It's all Boolean expressions. Okay. It was voted in, after some fighting, as a C++ 14 technical specification. That is, we are very likely to vote it in as what's called a technical specification. Uh, do the next vote is in Chicago next month. And I think it gets finalized somewhere just inside 1914, uh, 2014. And anyway, we have an implementation and all of this. Uh, I would rather have liked it as part of the language itself, but the 
um, there, there was some opposition. Um, most of it coming from people who actually thought this was really cool. And that we just needed to tweak it just a little bit and it will become right. Um, as you guess, I don't think so. Um, uh, this was characterized as doing only the easy part and a few other uh, derogatives like that. And they managed to maneuver into a technical specification. This is politics. This is a design by me, Gabby Dos Reyes, and Andrew Sodden. Andrew Sodden did the implementation. It's part, uh, there's a branch of GCC that is there. I don't know if you have it here. If not, you should, because you're doing a lot of concepts. And um, I believe there's a newer, improved version happening in the next week or so. Uh, let's see. OK, we attacked the complexities. I already said we could compile fast, which is one of the important proofs of the pudding. Anybody can say that things are simple. Anybody can say things are um, not complex. But we can actually say we have a compiler that compiles fast. Sort of not not fast compared to a lot of things, but it's fast relative to uh, to to code that uses an enable if or some other trickery to to, to control it. There's no concept maps. There's no uh, new syntax for uh, defining uh, concepts, and there's no scope or lookup issues at all. That's just gone. Uh, whether you like it or not, it's gone because we couldn't fit it in under the set of constraints we're dealing with. Um, there's always people who want to, to get it back, but, well, we'll see. Uh, I'm reluctant to put any, uh, adding any complexity uh, at this stage. So one of the things that we are dealing with here, coming out of the Palo Alto TR, as that report was called, um, concepts are fundamental. They're, they're meant to have uh, represent uh, fundamental concept in an application area. Uh, Alex has been saying this for at least 15 years, but most people haven't gotten it. Um, and uh, basically that means that they, they're not sort of arbitrary and there's not all that many of them. You, 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 you bring an algebra book or a calculus book and you see what you find on the first few pages. And, what, what, what do you find in the next chapters and such? There's, there's a limited number and it's fundamental. And concepts comes in clusters. You don't have a free choice. Uh, in particular, uh, subtractable is not a concept. By itself, it doesn't make sense. Concepts comes in clusters. There's a relation between, a, uh, say, say a <sighs> Yeah, I was going to come there next. I was actually going for a ring and a field first. They, they are separate concepts, and they have to be related. And when you look at the operations within a concept, they too has to be related. So the, the main point is that you don't have a free choice. Um, you, 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 when you're attacking the fundamentals of an uh, application area, one, there's almost certainly some previous history, and two, you can't just take one concept and then another concept and think they'll just by magic be independent. Furthermore, when you look at what you do with an object inside an object, you, you, you don't have a choice. So if, if you have um, plus and multiply or if you have plus and minus, they have to have a relation. The operations are not individual and the concepts are, are not isolated individuals. Um, and um, there's the clusters here and the, the operations. And it's not just syntax. There's a semantics uh, to go with it. Plus and minus doesn't make any sense whatsoever if they do the same thing. Uh, well, there's a bit of, I guess, yeah, you can work one that works that. But anyway, there's one, yeah, model, one, there's one model I can do. If plus adds and, uh, and, and minus does output, uh, we, we are in a different world. Um, so so they, they're related, you have, have semantic aspects of it. We are not at this stage in the language design um, dealing with semantics. There's two reasons for that. One, we wanted something that was really simple. And there are things about the semantics we don't quite know how to do. 
and secondly actions created some of the strongest opposition in the standards committee so we know if there was actions in there um, we would have a, an instant uh, opposition I, I just didn't think we could do it at least not on the time scale we're dealing with um, they're supposed to be there I'm pretty sure it'll be there uh, I even have some idea of what they should look like look at the Palo Alto TR for starters but they're not there yet and then one thing that convinces a lot of people who's never heard about this is we've always had concepts I mean C has concept that should be, could be C here, it's a bug. C has concepts. It has concepts integral and arithmetic. There's no types, they're not types. They, they're classification of types. And if you know when some, there, there are lots of rules that says if you have an arithmetic type, you can do this. Okay, so, Dennis got it right. Uh, C has concepts. And uh, the STL obviously has concepts, uh, forward, iterator, predicate, things like that. So, look, We've got them. They're there already. And informally, we have container and sequence. And um, uh, I stuck my neck out a bit uh, in the fourth edition of the C++, and I'm actually describing concepts. And one of the statements I think I made in there is that obviously working generic code has concepts. Because if they weren't there, uh, it wouldn't work. You have to somewhere, probably not in the code because the language doesn't support it, but maybe in the documentation, or maybe just in your head, there has to be a concept that specifies what the set of arguments are supposed to do. So you got them. It's just a matter of uh, can you write them down, can you formalize them. We're not actually inventing this stuff. We're inventing a notation for this stuff. So. Uh, with, with the plus plus away there, it's uh, good. Uh, that, by the way, in, in case you didn't recognize him, is supposed to be Plato. He, he was, he was uh, keen on ideals and things like that. I'm, I'm not sure I believe in Plato, but uh, it's, it's, it's a nice picture. Uh, so what is a concept? Let's see what it's not. One of the things that concepts became in the C++ OX arena is they became the minimal requirements for an implementation. So, uh, whenever there was a slight difference between two, um, two algorithms, or use of a thing, you, you got a new concept. So, I don't remember if they had, a, a, had different concepts for, for, for having um, plus and plus plus. I think they did, and they certainly had different concept for having a destructor and not having a destructor and trivially constructible was I believe a, a concept as opposed to constructing with a default constructor and things like that. Um, no, that's implementation artifacts and that's not what we want to, to try. That gives, uh, gives instable code. If, 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 if I go and I write the absolute minimal concept for my implementation, I'll never be able to change that implementation again before, uh, without affecting my users. And that's what we more or less have when we don't have concepts, when we have just the implementation being the defi defining uh, property of, uh, of, of a template library uh, component. And we don't want just to formalize the problem. We actually have to do something better. Uh, requirements should be stable, which means that we have to look for concepts that are more widely usable. Um, for starters, remember those 120 concepts in C++ OX? Can you, yeah, can, can, can you remember 120 concepts? Well, I can't. Um, now, if there's a dozen, or two dozen, I have a really fair chance of actually knowing them and knowing roughly what they are. And that'll be true for implementers, and it'll be true for users. Implementers are sometimes users and vice versa. And so we need to drive the number of concepts down uh, through generalization 
to the point where we can remember them. And that's also the way we get clock compatibility. Um, that is, if everybody uses the same concepts, random access, iterator, predicate, uh, regular, then there's a good chance that my code will work together with yours because we sort of feed from the same trough. Uh, I, 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 I do my, um, my debugging with an integer, and that means that most regular things will work and things like that. Okay. This is a splendid point of taking some questions and then stopping for, for lunch or whatever we're doing. Uh, because I actually never got to the uh, language design. I basically you have more time to get to that. Yes, I will get to language design after lunch. But basically, um, I said something that probably most of you uh, knew a lot about already. But I was trying to lay the, the foundation for, for the design. W what is it that, that, that drives it? Um, then you can see how we succeeded or not in the exercise after lunch. But any questions at this stage? Yeah. It's kind of a syntactic like, political question, but is the term concepts kind of polluted now? We have constraints and concepts. It sounds like what you're talking about here is called constraints in C++. I'm not, uh, I'm, I actually, they, they, they are creeping back to be called concepts. Okay. And they are concepts. It is just that Right after the concept debugger in C++ OX, uh, a lot of people thought that concepts were what they were in C++ OX, and it was a dirty word. And some people thought the concepts were something that was supposed to be just like Haskell's. Um, and so one, the term had been polluted. And two, we needed a term that allowed us to discuss the old stuff versus the new stuff without using the name uh, again. And um, so we used constraints. We could have used predicate, but for some reason we didn't. And then over time things have happened that was probably nice, which is that concepts have been creeping back again. First, somebody got the idea of labeling what we were doing concepts like. They must have liked Coke or something. But uh, so, so, so constraints became concept light. I'm not quite sure what there's light about them, but they're, they're certainly lighter than the, 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 the bloated ones before. And now there's a keyword concept for defining a Boolean expression, a Boolean function that, that does uh, the checking. And so my guess is, you know, give, give it another year or two, and they'll be called concepts. And you saw my title, C++14 concepts. Um, I'm nudging things that way and hope to uh, eventually get the old concepts um, to disappear. But such terminology things actually are important as you're moving along and want to have rational discussions rather than inflamed discussions and confused discussions. <laughs>